everyone, it's uh, Lance Klesig and I'm here today with uh, Luke Burglar, Mike Steinfeld. We are outside of uh, Ridgeway, Minnesota, here far southeast Minnesota. Uh, we're in an interseeded uh, crop field, a corn field. But first off, guys, tell us a little bit about um, how many farm acres you guys farm and graze. Luke? I'm in that 200 acre mark, uh, about 70 acres of grass, and uh, run brood cows on that grass. I run about 160 acres. Uh, 50 acres of grass and run root cows also. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about some of the crops you guys grow. I know you guys work together on some of this stuff, so what do you guys? I'm uh, corn, soybean, alfalfa hay, uh, sorghum sedan grass with some uh, more species, sunflowers, peas, millets, uh, and then also some grazing covers, multi-species. Uh, cover crop grazing. I'm about the same, mainly corn, alfalfa, hay mix, multi-species covers for grazing, uh, some winter cereal rye, winter trit, uh, hairy veg. And awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about what you guys are holding. Mike, go ahead. I guess this uh, purple top turnip. had more sunlight, more growth. Luke, walk us through about when you planted this corn, what date, roughly, uh, what population? We're in, uh, let's just say May 20th, ran about 36,000 population, and we were in here in uh, June 22nd uh, with about 22 to 25 pound, 15-way uh, uh, interseed mix. Okay. And can you guys tell us a little bit about uh, how many species and, and kind of the base of the, of the interseed mix? A few base are uh, ryegrass, uh, several species of clovers, and a lot of your common brassicas. Awesome, awesome. And so before we move over and look at the equipment, guys, the, the gandy and the rotary that they use, you know, we have some pretty impressive corn here. And it's not just on the end here, it's all the way through. We have some really awesome uh, forage that you guys are going to graze uh, come after combining. So let's let's just take a, a couple steps over here, guys, and then we'll we'll kind of wrap up here. Um, tell us a little bit about the rig here. You guys built this? We did. Basically, six row rotary hoe that we stripped down to go in between the corn rows, and we purchased the gandy and added that on, and made it. So it fits between the corn rows, blow our seed out on the corn. Never look back. Awesome. And you guys built it this winter? Correct. Right. So tell us a little bit about, so we have some pretty impressive yield here, guys. Uh, you know, we were talking about this probably 170, 180, 185, I don't know, bushel corn. So solid corn. Are you guys worried about maintaining yield? I'm not worried about maintaining it, even if it's uh, off my averages of value. I can get out of having a cover in here, all the way from uh, erosion control, nutrient cycling, and the grazing aspect of it uh, will far more than make up for any bushels lost. Tell us a little bit about how many months or days of grazing you guys are going to get this after the combine goes through here in 45 days or a month, if you had to guess. Is it going to be a month of grazing? Is it going to be six weeks of grazing? I mean, I know it depends on snow, but... I'm actually looking at taking some cutting uh, once the corn is off and just do some waste samples. But I, I'm going to project I might be out here an extra uh, 30 days is what I'm hoping I would consider a success. Awesome. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about your guys' focus. It used to be very yield-oriented or yield-driven. You've now jumped to a different paradigm. Tell us a little bit about that. I guess uh, we're more looking at uh, return on investments rather than bushels or, or profits per acre rather than the amount that we're getting. Um, cutting our input and using more plants and soil health principles, I guess, to increase our... And so, 
Luke and Mike are doing a really awesome job. They're a couple years into this journey. They both work off the farm, but they also work farm full time in my opinion. You just heard them talk about running, you know, 360, 400 acres collectively. Uh, but they're also farming regeneratively, which is a step above sustainably. So we're talking about profitability, but we're also talking about building soil, building habitat for our earthworms to start cycling nutrients and making those nutrients available. Guys, tell us a little bit about some of the, the soil health principles that are kind of most important to you or some that you really like to think about. Uh, one of the main ones for me is uh, armor on your soil, uh, whether it be with interseeding or a, a cereal crop that's been rolled down or uh, terminated. Uh, just keeping your ground covered up, uh, really uh, combating the erosion and uh, feeding the biology. Mike, I guess it would be, you know, keep a living root in your soil as long as possible. I mean, the, the root activity in your soil health is, is huge, for sure. And these guys are also taking it a step further and they're gonna, like we talked about, graze. So that's adding not only diversity of species, a, a, a very diverse mix, but also uh, having livestock here and, and the saliva and the dung and the urine from the cows. It's all a picture, it's all part of the equation. It's all part of the picture. So great job, guys. Uh, another one last thing. Tell us a little bit about the power of networking and how you, how that's come to be really important. Well, surrounding yourself with people that are like-minded and have a common goal. Um, I guess real quick, uh, five of us jumped in a pickup, went to see Gabe Brown after uh, reading his book. We paid Gabe $1,000 to let us on and tell us what he's been doing. Um, but what it did for me was I could almost look down the scope 20 years and see where I could be if I can stay on track and uh, it just was a was a good investment. Uh, Gabe Brown will forget more about regenerative ag than I will ever learn. I can almost guarantee you that. Awesome. I guess for me it's, it's kind of like building this machine you know if you're networking with other people that are, are like-minded and, and doing the same thing, you can bounce the ideas off of each other. You know, Luke and I bounce the ideas off of each other about this for years before we actually went for it. Or talk each other off the ledge when we're having a problem. Correct, yeah. You know, for sure, we can be a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what advice or encouragement might you give somebody that's watching our video about trying cover crops or going down this path of soil health and regenerative age. What's one piece of advice from each of you guys? I would say uh, start small and keep it simple. And uh, start with uh, something simple like winter rye. It'll take nothing special that you don't already have or are currently farming with to anything from seed to terminate to plant into, however you choose to go about it. And it's uh, inexpensive to get your feet wet. Awesome. I guess I would say try it. Don't be afraid to fail or learn from your mistakes mm -hmm. because anything that you do do is so beneficial for the soil that it's it's huge. Yeah, it's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, folks, if you've enjoyed our video today, I'd encourage you to consider subscribing. And so lastly, just to wrap up, it's uh, Lance Klesig, Luke Burglar, uh, Mike Steinfeld, these guys farm in southeast Minnesota here near Ridgeway. And so we just want to thank you for joining us and uh, choose to make it a great day. So thanks everyone.